Okay, so the question is, this is a specific heat question. The specific heat of zinc is 0 0.096 calories per gram per degree Celsius. I'll explain that in a minute. Okay. How much energy, which is calories, another way of saying how many calories required to raise two five zero point zero grams of zinc from 24 degrees Celsius to 150 degrees Celsius. Okay, so now you can have your paper back. Okay, so this is pretty, uh, this is a pretty straightforward um, heat equation question. First thing you're going to need to know for this test, you have to know the heat equation. Anybody want to tell me what that is? No, just it's called the heat equation. Energy required equals mass of the object times specific heat times it doesn't matter. You can write it in. It's multiplication. You can uh, you can switch it up. You can put them in any order you want. I've just learned it in this order. Okay. So to determine the number of calories used. In a heat equation, you have to know the mass of the object that's being heated or cooled. You have to know the specific heat value, which you all don't have the capability to determine. It's going to be given for you. And you also have to have the delta T, which is the, that's just a fancy way of saying temperature difference. So let's start plugging and playing. Let's see what we know about this so far. The mass of the object is given to us in the problem, right? 250 grams of zinc. 250.0 grams. Okay? And remember that 250.0 is important. Why? Because Mr. Williams, that's who you have, right, Williams? What he's doing is he's specifying four significant figures. He wants his answer in four sig figs now. Or at least that's that's the way I take it. Uh, a little bit of confusion on sig figs from the uh, Professor, Professor Still, and the book even says something different. So let's not worry about that right now. So we know the first part of the three things that we need to know. Specific heat. What is the specific heat of zinc? It's given to us at the beginning of the problem. So 0 0.096 calories per gram per degree Celsius. And now we need to know the temperature change. The temperature change in this problem, as stated by the problem itself, is what? 150 minus 24. 126 degrees, is that right, Celsius? Everybody got their calculators out and following along? If not, you probably should be. Because uh, it would be good to have all the practice that you can work in these problems. Okay, so now let's rewrite this. We want our answer, energy required, so he doesn't specify whether he wants calories or joules, does he? Okay, so we're going to use calories. Okay, and that's something that on a test, if you put it joules, and he was expecting calories, and he didn't specify it on the test question, I would say you'd have a valid case to go to him after the test if he marked it wrong and say, Hey, you didn't tell us whether you wanted in joules or calories. Just throwing that out there. Okay, so we're going to use calories. Okay, so calories equals 250.0 grams of zinc times 0 0.096 calories, which is the specific heat. It's the calories required to raise one gram of zinc by one degree Celsius which is essentially what that means, okay? So your specific heat value is always going to have a G and a C under it, and there's always understood to be a 1 
in front of what it stands for is one gram by one degree Celsius, okay? And then last thing is your temperature change, 126 degrees Celsius. So now let's do the math. Can you come on, multiply that straight across? Multiply straight across. It'll be 3,000. Uh, 3, okay, so then I'm going to bring this back here. What, okay, what are y'all coming up with? I got the same thing. Three, two, four. Okay, so two, one. Yeah. Three, three. Say again. You speak up just a little. I'm sorry. I'm really three, hard to hear. Three, zero, two, four. Three, zero, two, four. That's it? That's no. Yes, even. Three, zero, two, four, even. Okay, wow, that's unusual. Okay, so now we've got our numeric value from doing the math. And here's why I want to show you that there's this G and the C under here is understood to be one, okay? Because just like your other conversion factors you've been doing all semester, everything on the top and everything on the bottom is going to cancel out. So you got grams over grams, cancel each other out. You got degrees Celsius over degrees Celsius, they cancel each other out. And then what unit are you left with? Calories. So now it's safe to write calories out there. Now we're not done. We need to figure out how many significant figures we're going to put this answer in, okay? Your given information is always a measured number, almost always, with the exception of if it's like 10 days or five people or uh, six pencils, or okay, those are exact numbers, but in this case, somebody measured out 250.0 grams of zinc. All right, so we know that there's a margin of error for that, okay? So that's going to be a measured number. So we're going to count the significant figures. And that is one, two, three, four sig figs. Okay? Specific heat. We're going to count. We don't count ones. Ones automatically don't count for sig figs, okay? All right, but we're going to count the number of significant figures in 0.096 because that's a measured number as well. Okay? How many significant figures in 0.096? Sorry? Two. So we've got two sig figs there. Good job. Almost said four myself. And then we've got the temperature change or delta T, 126. We all know that's three sig figs. So, when you're multiplying and or dividing, you always use the least number of significant figures based on the information with, without the framework, throughout the fra framework of the problem that are measured numbers, not exact numbers, okay? So in this case, the least number of six figs is two. So we need to put 3024 into two significant figures, okay? This is going to be a problem. This is a tricky. I'm glad we got this one. This will be a kind of like a trick question almost. Okay, so here's what I do. When I know I'm putting something into two sig figs, I start from the left. I underline the first two digits. I get to keep those for sure. That next digit is going to determine whether that zero, that second number, changes, say, zero or changes to a one. If this two was zero through four, we round down. It's five through nine, we round up. So what happens? Zero stays the same, right? Remember, you can't move where the decimal is. So we keep the zero, but you have to replace these placeholders with the zeros. So 3,000 calories. Problem. How many significant figures is 3,000? One. What if I put a decimal there? Now how many significant figures? Four. That's a problem because we need to put our answer in two. What is the only way we can do that? I'm sorry? Yeah, scientific notation. So we take this 3,000, we come over, put our decimal there, 3.0 times 10 to the third. Because we came over three decimal spots, so that gives us our 10 to the positive third power and then 3.0, because we all know that when we're considering significant figures, 
and we're in scientific notation, this part doesn't count. Only the coefficient counts towards total insignificant figures, okay? So, that's the good thing about scientific notation is it's not too far off base. That's one sig fig. That's two sig figs. That's three sig figs. That's four sig figs. So scientific notation, in addition to doing the other things it does, also allows you to put an answer in the right number of significant figures if, in a case like 3,000, there's no other way to do it. Okay? I hope that's not too confusing. I know that's uh, kind of a kind of an oddball question, but he probably put that on there to make you think outside of the box when it came to predicating your answer. Okay? Any questions about that? Feel free to holler it out. Now's the time. What not Tuesday. Zero rule on six figs? I'm sorry? What is the zero rule on six figs? Like, zero. Deal, dealing with zeros on six figs is the only thing you can trust. 